Well, it's Monday. It's Monday all day today, and it might just be the perfect day for a triple upload. Triple upload. But who knows? I'm getting a bit of a late start due to those bastards at UVerse and their shoddy internet connections. But this morning, uh, early afternoon, or depending when you're watching it, I thought we would just have a little lighthearted video to start off the day. Have a little fun. Uh, enjoy the salty tears of the man babies complaining about the Buffy the Vampire reboot with a black uh, lead. Let's taste some of those salty man baby tears because, you know, men are always complaining about when they have their beloved franchises rebooted because they're all sexists, they're all problematic, and we have to point it all. Uh, whoops. Anita Sarkeesian. Well, I never. I just scream no at the top of my lungs. Why? No, please, for the love of all that is good, please do not do this. Well, what is she complaining about? Well, it's the Buffy the Vampire Slayer reboot. Imagine. Look at all these salty man baby tears. I'd be here for a show based on the same universe and lore, say, for instance, around the fray, the comic. But Buffy comes from a very specific moment in media history, especially feminist media history. I'm afraid no matter how talented the folks involved are, it wouldn't live up to it. It's almost like the exact same thing most of us say or said when they rebooted Ghostbusters and people like you stuck your finger in our face and told us we were sexist. Isn't that interesting? Is Anita Sarkeesian a closet racist? Who knows? More tonight at 9 p.m. First they came for Transformers and I said nothing. Ugh, one of the worst movie franchises in history. It seems that you are now on the other end of the diversity reboot perspective. Welcome to the dark side, Anita. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Look at all these man baby, man baby salty tears. How about this one? Buffy the Vampire Slayer is getting a reboot with a black woman in the lead role. Look at some of this salty, look at Princess Bisexual Vampire. Instead of a black Buffy, how about you just sew a story of another black slayer? Even better, how about we just let black creators make their own things? L.A. Banks has a whole ass Vampire Huntress series. Joss did not invent Vampire Hunters. Well, whew, gonna have to reach out to the doctor and switch away to that Fake salt, no salt, because your NACL levels are dangerously high. It's been 21 years since Joss Whedon's Buffy the Vampire Slayer first arrived on the scene with its seminal mix of urban fantasy, teen angst, and clever world bu building and wordplay. Now Whedon has announced that he will revive his beloved series for a new generation of Slayers with one major twist. Are you ready? This is a huge plot twist. Are you okay? Are you ready for this? This is changing everything. This is going to be why you want to tune in for the Buffy the Vampire Slayer reboot. Here it comes. Working with 20th Century Fox TV through its cable and streaming development arm, Fox 21 Studios, Weedle, Whedon will produce an inclusive reboot of Buffy starring a black woman in the iconic title role in originally played by Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yes, that's right. They've done nothing to the story but replace a a totally meaningless physical physical trait. It's almost like rebooting Ghostbusters but making them all women. But I digress. Whedon will be an executive producer on the project. And Monica Wasu Breen who worked with Whedon in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will serve as a showrunner and head writer. Breen is a television veteran whose 
Previous writing and producing credits include Charmed, Fringe, Midnight, Texas, according to Deadline. This is all great news for Buffy fans. However, the original series already had multiple characters of color who could factor into an inclusive reboot. Wait a minute, Vox. It sounds like Vox doesn't want this reboot to happen either. Why Why do you think that is? Is this more Man Baby Tears? Including a Black Slayer Kendra and the First Slayer, as well as other characters. As a reboot, some fans reacting to the news... I'm, uh, I'm sorry, as a result, some fans acting to the news of a reboot simply focus on a different character. Some fans have even questioned the need for a reboot of Buffy at all. Oh my god! Look, imagine that many sexists and homophobes and racists out there. Holy crap! Still, speaking to the Hollywood Reporter last year, Whedon stated that in order... Can we get... Like, dude, why is it always... Seriously, why is it like the same five people that make everything? Is there nobody else out there? It's the same repackaged garbage. Joss Whedon is a stereotypical, like, f ultra far left crazy person. Can we, like, get some people who aren't insane producing TV so shows? Anyway, he would like to overcome the fear of producing, quote, creaky storytelling. Putting uh, Uwasu Breen in charge of this seems to be the way of giving his fans the best of both worlds. By creating a diverse new show... That character that features a storyline and a universe that they already know and love. So they're literally admitting that the Buffy the Vampire reboot is purely about changing the characters, the main character's color. Right? Reboot culture has struck again. Oh, no, not you too, Refinery. Black women and walk deserve more than Buffy the Vampire Slayer reboot. Oh, so... So you're saying that you don't want to recycle the old an old beloved franchise and just replace the sex or color of skin in somebody. Interesting. Interesting that when it's a woman, all of a sudden it's not okay. Could you be any more transparent? Could you be? I don't think so. Reboot culture has struck again. A new Buffy the Vampire Slayer series is in development. From the information available so far, Joss Whedon will return to executive producer while manager, writer, Monica, who cares, agents of who cares, will be working on writing the script. But the most important part of the news, folks, most important is a black woman will be featured as the lead of the show. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what color the person's skin is. Or what sexuality there is, other than rags like the refinery and Vox and grifters like Anita Sarkeesian. Nobody cares. Real fans of Buffy the Vampire. So imagine, imagine. Now I watched the show. I think here and there when I was young. I actually remember the original movie. And that's what I liked. The oh, actual fans of Buffy, normies, dare I say, are going to be asking the question. What happened to this character? What happened to this character? What's been happening over the past few years in this town? What's, what's going on with this storyline? Did this question ever get answered? Those are the important questions to actual fans of the show, not shill media outlets that just are always pushing an ideology. The news brought me a wave of conflicting feelings. Buffy was such an important part of my childhood. And in a lot of ways, my first introduction to fandom culture, be part of loving the show, meant reckoning with its imperfections. Like many other forms of media at the time, even touted feminist examples, marginalized people or afterthoughts. As reboots gain popularity and are a dominant popular culture, I'm apprehensive that the reboot Buffy is the solution to the demand for more stories that reflect the fantasy settings. Buffy was an important part of my home life. Some of my oldest memories include my mother, who was largely disinterested in anything connected to science fiction or horror, carving out time every Sunday to watch the latest episode of Buffy. Pfft. Yeah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> it's funny how all these writers are always happen to be like super mega ultra fans. Uh, sometimes she would even play the show while she braided my hair for the upcoming week. 
making sure to keep my eyes averted from the screen as to not give her impressionable child nightmares from the over overtly 90s special effects, though I didn't watch the show myself until I was college. Wait, what? What? Oh. I get it. Your mom watched it. Okay, 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 okay. Though I didn't watch a show myself until I was in college. I'm a little old for that. I had always been attached to the fondness that my mother had for it. Watching an entire series for my own, I reached adulthood was an incredible experience. Almost like reintroducing yourself to a long lost friend. I fell in love with Buffy and her longing to be a normal girl while carrying the isolating and unfair weight of being the only slayer. I was going through as a young black woman, carrying multiple burdens. I felt conflicted by my love of this show's charm in spite of my frustration that of its treatment of the few black female character that were featured on screen during the show's run. There was Kendra Young, a slayer chosen after Buffy's temporary death, only to meet her own end by season two. Nikki Wood, a slayer during the 70s, who was Sunnydale principal. Robin Wood's mother and later killed by Spike. Olive this is like pulled directly from Wikipedia. Get out of here. Olivia Williams, an old friend of the romantic interests of the friend Giles, that got a few fleeting moments on screen. It's funny. All right, let's just bring it back. We know what the rest of this article is going to read like. But isn't it interesting to see the different opinion that media outlets like Vox and bold feminists, bold path forgers like Anita Sarkeesian uh, completely abandoned that narrative when it's something that they liked. Isn't that interesting?